Hey everyone, Harry here to talk about Jack Smith and the Department of Justice's request for a very speedy trial in the 1-6 matter before Judge Tanya Chutkin. All right, so this is an order that she transmitted through the magistrate at the very first appearance where Trump uh, was arraigned and pleaded not guilty. And, and it was already noteworthy rather than saying, all right, a status conference before the judge, and then we'll set a time to uh, determine a calendar. The magistrate, having conferred with her, told them to right now go ahead and set and submit briefs and make your arguments and um, positions known about how fa how when the trial should take place. Government is to do it by today, August tenth, and Trump, I believe, by Monday. So anyway, the government has come in with its proposal, and it says. How about January 2nd? So think, by the way, so this is a very sort of strategic game of chess, right? Look back to Mar-a-Lago. Uh, the government came in with an early December uh, suggestion. Trump said, we don't want to make any. And the judge basically let Trump uh, and his co-defendant get away with it. And then she set her her own. I don't think Chutkin will. And, uh, you know, with Cannon, you could have thought, all right, I have one suggestion and a nothing. I'll go with the one suggestion. I think uh, Team Trump, if, they're, if they do the same thing, will find themselves maybe in that situation. So they need to come out of the box and offer a date. Now, when the government says January 2nd, uh, they go through their, their important, um, interim dates in a, in a schedule with culminating in trial. And the big things are so-called dispositive motions. That means that team, that Trump is going to try to dismiss the whole case, that it would dispose of it, uh, with different challenges. A defendant always does that merit victorious or not. And then closer to trial, so-called motions in limine, which are more about how to handle particular points of evidence. So the trial, uh, the government says, look, we can do these dispositive motions in about a month. They can make their motions uh, and then we'll oppose them. They can reply them and we'll have um, a motions hearing around Halloween or so. Then we would move into motions in limine mid-November uh, go back and forth with those. You'll decide them and we'll have a pretrial conference early December and we will start to select, uh, a jury in around December 11th and they leave a lot of time for that, which is interesting. Even in a streamlined schedule, they basically concede that this is one case that's going to take a lot of time to choose a jury. And then they say, well, let's start first of this January 2nd with the trial, which they say will take about four weeks, uh, three to four weeks. So even that, they're saying they can do it pretty quickly. I think that sounds about right if the, if it's done properly, as I've, you know, been saying repeatedly of late, a good prosecutor simplifies. You want it. Uh, shorter rather than longer. And, and there's a lot of evidence here, a lot to move through. But if they are really streamlined and to the point about it, they probably can do it in that time. Okay, this sets up a real, you know, dilemma or difficult strategic uh, point for Trump. What what will they do now? We'll see in a few days. But let's say they, they're looking at January 2nd. They could try to just Take it off the board. Say, that's ridiculous. Let's just talk about it, et cetera, and not even offer one themselves. Or they can offer one, but there's this anchoring effect of the choice of January 2nd. So what will they say? They can, they may point out January is the E. Jean Carroll case. I think it's uh, March that is the Bragg case. And they can say, so the earliest we can do it, say, is June. Something like that. But they'll already look like they're stalling. And and June, you know, it's not terrible. So I think in going for January 2nd, 
the um, department is being pretty strategic. I think they, if if they got their wish and she said, fine, let's do it then, I think they could comply in time. But um, there, it's it's sort of a strategy move to to paint Trump into a corner and see how he responds. Two more interesting things to go over from the motion. Um, the first is that they talk about speedy trial, and speedy trial is a public right as well as a right usually of the defendant, even though uh, Trump is trying to avoid it here. But they give a very interesting little finesse. They could be saying, this guy's running for president. He wants to get to November. He's trying to stall. It would be a catastrophe for the country. They don't quite, they don't do that. What they do is sort of advert to the situation. So they, what they say is, it would vindicate the public's strong interest in a speedy trial. That's just a general interest so far. Um, but of particular significance here, where the defendant, a former president, is charged with conspiring to overturn the legitimate results of the 2020 presidential election, obstruct the certification of the election results, and discount citizens' legitimate votes. Now, if you look very carefully at that sentence, what is it about that that really states a claim for particular significance of a speedy trial? You know, it doesn't. Really, right? It talks about, I mean, that, that's why the charges are so important and grave. But it's basically, you know, you got to read between the lines to understand. But I think Smith believes that Chuckin will understand that what we're going at is his attempts to elude accountability by getting to the election and the public interest in countermanding that, keeping that from happening. But that's all they, you know, really uh, say about it, and it's just sort of left to um, the the court to kind of um, understand it. The other important point, and this goes to the whole protective order that's going to be played out uh, on uh, tomorrow on the 11th, they say that as with Mar-a-Lago, they are ready to give all kinds of things to Trump uh, well in advance of the deadline for them, and most notably, grand jury transcripts. So transcripts, statements by witnesses, the defendant has a right to under a law called the Jenks Act, but not until actually the witness testifies there are some interpretations that you wait till they're done and then you can turn over these statements to use for cross examination most people would do it somewhat sooner than that but they're saying we'll do it tomorrow if he enters into this protective order and if that happens that means trump will have as he did in mar-a-lago Here's what Pence said in the grand jury. Here's what Mark Meadows said in the grand jury. Here's all kinds of stuff. And, uh, you know, read it and weep, um, basically. Uh, and, you know, we're ready, have at it now, except uh, it makes it all the more important that there be in place some kind of protective order so he doesn't use it to just completely you know, try to lacerate these witnesses in the public eye. But he'll know, and that it'll be pretty big news. Okay, so the the U.S. responds to the filing with a very early trial uh, date proposal, leaving Trump in a tricky position. They say it's a, there's a public interest for it by kind of hinting at the whole situation where Trump's trying to wiggle out with the election and they make clear they're going to give him the mother load and let him have it as long as he doesn't then try to use it to um, threaten witnesses or taint the, the jury pool. So this whole um, case, the what I've said for a while now, you know, built for speed and seeming to go potentially going first is really, you know, moving along very quickly. And we'll see what happens, say, with the Eugene Carroll case scheduled for January. But they're now bucking to make this the first thing. And, you know, if it's, say, if she chooses, say, February, the trial could be over by April. He'd be sentenced by the summer. It, th yes, things might be on appeal, although the appeal could actually have been decided, just not, you know, Supreme Court 
And, you know, we could have a real determination of what the former president of the United States and uh, putative nominee of the Republican Party is looking at for people to be able to factor that into their voting decisions come November. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.